In video number one, I was talking about how a coaxial line with a short-circuiting disc at the end uh, did not have any inductance or time delay due to the short circuit because there is a uh, TEM wave propagating down the line and it reflects off this boundary condition, reflects right back, and uh, uh, no time delay. So today I want to talk about how... Uh, you can get the same effect with a microstrip, except the problem with a microstrip is that even though it's TEM, uh, you can see here's a strip right here, here's the, the ground plane. You've got your electric field, you know, mostly contained underneath, but also curling around the outside. H field is, you know, encircling the microstrip and power is propagating and current is propagating down in the length direction. Uh, but I get the issue is how do you establish a good short circuit because back in the coaxial line you can see it's uh, this is a cross section is totally enclosed there's no way for the fields to creep out but on a micro strip uh, it is not enclosed if you look at a cross section right here you can see uh, the uh, currents are going to go down the micro strip line they're going to hit the short circuit and they're going to come back along the ground plane but we have an open boundary condition, you know, at the at, up on top. We've got one at either side. We've got one on the side walls that are parallel with the paper. Uh, so that's going to cause an issue in that, you know, we can put uh, vias right here. We could put a shorting wall right here. The question is, you know, what what kind of how high do we need it? How wide do we have to get it? Uh, we don't want to make it excessively wide because it could start radiating in. We make it too small. We may, may not get a short circuit. So. I want to try using, uh, again, Microwave Office and the Analyst 3D EM Simulator to come up with a method to find what's the, what's the optimum uh, wall size that we can get on here to provide a good short circuit to the uh, TEM wave that's you know, coming down the line and hitting it. Uh, we want to get away from kind of the circuit intuition where we think we have a via or an inductor right here and the current's creeping down. The current is going down there, but we want to minimize the amount of energy that's stored right here so we don't get, you know, an inductance or a time delay. So a calibration standard like this would typically be used for a TRL calibration. That stands for through reflect line. You want to be able to use a reflect standard to precisely set the reference plane for your measurement. In this case, we had a surface mount part stuck between two micro strips. You know, you obviously can't hook a piece of coax directly to the part, so you have to have a micro strip coming up to some solder pads right here. You want a precisely defined reference plane to get good uh, phase measurements on this thing. So you'll use your reflect as part of that that through reflect line to do your uh, your calibration. The other the through is typically a zero length, and then a line is going to be a precisely known micro strip line. It doesn't need to be 50 ohms, but it needs to be well known because that that is going to set the characteristic impedance of your S parameters. So I've set up a simulation in Microwave Office. Uh, starting with the global definitions, I, I like to define it kind of, a, these are just notes right here for my PCB stack. I'm going to have a, this is the copper drawing layer. It doesn't necessarily mean it's made out of copper. and this, it's going to be made out of perfect electrical conductor. But it's going to have a thickness of 35 microns and set at a reference Z height of 0 millimeters. And below that, I'm going to have air. Now, we go back to the uh, webcam right here. I'm going to use a height of one millimeter. That's kind of a nice, a nice height normalized to a value of one. So we can use other parameters which are kind of referenced to that height. Uh, that's going to give a width of five millimeters for approximately 50 ohms. It really comes out to like 49.8, but the impedance isn't real uh, critical in this because we're going to end up de-embedding the length of the line to get to the short circuit. Uh, using a air dielectric will get us a pure TEM. We don't have to worry about any discontinuity. You know, uh, microstrip is called quasi-TEM because the uh, E field in the substrate is going to be propagating slower than the E field in the air. You're going to have more down in the substrate than in the air, but you're still going to have some dispersion due to the, uh, you know, the, the uh, air and the uh, dielectric beneath it. Uh, and this thing is going to have a, uh, you know, you can calculate the cutoff frequency for microstrip. Actually, that's the cutoff frequency of the, the uh, non-TEM mode above it. But when the uh, strip height over the ground plane gets to be a quarter wavelength, in this case, one height, 
one millimeter height is going to have a 75 millimeter 75 gigahertz cutoff. Uh, you want to stay below that. Uh, the width of the line is five millimeters. This is going to be if you look at uh, if we go to, to 70 gigahertz, let's choose that the highest frequency. So a quarter wavelength at 70 gigahertz is going to be 1.1 millimeters. So we're below a quarter wavelength for this line. But the width of the line is going to be 5 millimeters, so it's going to be multiple quarter wavelengths across. It's going to be, you know, two half wavelengths across and then some. So uh, you could get modes, you know, going back and forth on this line across its uh, face. Uh, you would probably never be able to use this in reality, but since we're going to be using, because if you tried to put, let's say, a, a coaxial uh, feed right here, you're going to get some mode excitation across the line, which is not going to be good. Uh, in the EM simulator, we're going to be using a wave port to do this. So uh, it's going to uh, excite it uniformly, so we're not going to worry about modes going across. Uh, the length of the line you know, between the, the short that we're going to put right here, we want to have far enough away from the wave port that we uh, are, are uh, you know, any any modes, any discontinuities have died off by the time we get to the wave port. And we got to have the height uh, far enough also off the top of the uh, substrate in this case, uh, the, the uh, strip, you know, since there is no substrate. But something like 10 millimeters will probably work good, you know, multiple uh, heights of substrate away from that. So going back into uh, this, you can see uh, we're going to have the one millimeter of air, the perfect electrical conductor boundary condition at the bottom. Instead of having to draw a second layer, uh, since this is going to be an EM simulation, we can just use the bottom of the boundary as the return, the ground plane. I've set the uh, core and loss tangent. I typically like to define this as variables, but I set that to one and zero for air. Now looking at the substrate stack up, you can see the uh, thickness I set to 10 substrate heights, you know, above above this uh, the, where the strip is right here. Top and uh, side boundaries are open. The bottom is a perfect electrical conductor. Uh, we're not going to change any of the materials really right here. I, I like to add positive and negative uh, thicknesses for conductors. I'll go over that at another time, but it's useful for doing multi-layer circuits. Uh, EM mapping, that copper is going to be on the top layer right here, and then a via, which we're really not going to use, and the rest can be set to none. And then I have a microstrip uh, substrate, even though this really isn't going to be used, it's just for the uh, circuit simulation, should I need to do one with that. And then uh, over here I've defined an EM structure. So if you open up this uh, EM schematic right here, what I've defined is I've got my stack up, which gets automatically brought over from the uh, global definitions. And then uh, I've drawn a microstrip line. This is an EM schematic. It's kind of like a normal schematic, but you can drop schematic uh, elements into it, like any of your microstrip lines you could drop into here. And they won't simulate per se as you would in a linear simulator. It's just going to use the artwork. But you can put those down and uh, you can see if I change any of the parameters, the parameters of the artwork would change. And then I've got a sub-circuit tacked onto here for uh, to have a shorting wall. You know, this could be a via right here. We're just going to have a simple wall of material. And let me open up Analyst and show how that is defined. So I go over here and uh, open up this open in 3D editor. I've gone ahead and defined a brick of material that's going to have a, a thickness of one millimeter. It's going to be, you know, uh, at the uh, origin right here. It's going to have a height of one millimeter, which is a substrate height. And the width of this thing is parameterized, and the height is parameterized. If I go over here to uh, uh, wall height, and right now that's zero, I or set that to one, it will grow up. So the microstrip is going to be ending right here. And uh, the wall height has to, minimum, it has to be 35 microns because we want to go up to the top of the microstrip. But we're going uh, to start, you know, anywhere from. Uh, 35 microns and go all the way up to 
the boundary condition up top is 10 millimeters. So again, this is parameterized. So we can set the minimum width is we're going to want is about five uh, millimeters, which is the width of the line. And then the height will, will go up to 10. So I can close this and do not save the changes. And you can see it's, it's stuck back in microwave office now. I put a wave port back in Analyst. The only reason I put a wave port on there is for alignment purposes. So if I do want to change the microstrip line, I go back to the EM schematic, excuse me, EM schematic for the circuit right here. Let me close that. Open this EM schematic. You can see now that I put a wave port on that rectangular shorting wall, now I can connect it to my microstrip line. And, and should I go into the layout options and tell it to auto snap, anytime I change the geometry parameters of this line, it would take and automatically snap to it and stay connected between simulations. Uh, I've set the length of this thing to 15. Again, multiple substrate heights, you know, away from the wave port, which is defined right here on this left boundary condition. And then the, uh, I've set this uh, about 10 more millimeters in this direction, so we get any fields coming off, you know, the wall right here, they'll have a place to terminate down on the ground plane below. So I'll close this out and take a look at the 3D version of this circuit. So I've already simulated this thing. Uh, so let's go, go ahead and close this. So I've set this thing to simulate from 1 gigahertz to 70, 70 gigahertz. Again, you'd never go that high for this with the line. You actually probably wouldn't go past 15 uh, uh, gigahertz. But uh, I've gone ahead and added a uh, annotation onto here showing the port fields. So uh, first mode, magnitude E field, and a 40 dB range. And this is kind of important because we want to we want to be able to use the field plot of the port solution to figure out how big we want to make the shorting wall behind here. So 40 dB is a good range. You know you may want to use 30 or maybe maybe 50 but I wouldn't go beyond that. And we're looking at it at, at 70 gigahertz. If I go back into the analyst setup uh, like on the coax example, I've changed some defaults in here. I've set it to a 1% tolerance, 0 0.01 uh, for mesh adaption, and I want to have three minimum in iterations, you know, converge after it goes below that 1% tolerance. So we're going to do that for the port solve and also do it for the, uh, the full solve. So trying to get high accuracy right here. So uh, one thing to look at, uh, and this is pretty important when, you, when you're doing uh, circuitry. You know, you always want to look at your mesh and you always want to look at the currents after you've solved it. Uh, for microstrip, you know, most of the currents are going to be contained. I would, by most, I mean, let's say 60%. 60% of the currents are going to be on the underside of the line. You, know, you could say 40% are going to be on the top side of the line. Uh, of those that are on the top and the bottom, most of the currents are going to be at the edges. You know, let's say 80% is going to be at the edges with maybe 20% in the middle. So that tells you that you need to have a very good edge mesh to be able to capture those currents. You don't want to have any kind of discontinuities in there. Uh, so at minimum, you would want, you know, a mesh cell here on one third, a mesh cell for the other third, and a mesh cell in the middle. You know, maybe two mesh cells across would suffice, but you should never ever have one mesh cell across. Uh, you know, I, I usually think of uh, rectangular mesh cells, like when I'm using the 2D accent simulator. But uh, in this case, we're going to have tetrahedra. This is on the surface. If you can zoom in, you can probably see the uh, see the edge right here. Yeah, I think the edge is meshed a little bit. But, uh, but anyway, you still want to have the same, you know, fine fine tetrahedra across here without any without any large discontinuities where you get uh, poor representations of your current. So now if I get my bearings right on this thing and get it flipped, flipped around properly, uh, we'll take a look at the actual fields now. So again, the majority of the E-field is, is concentrated between the strip and the ground plane, and then you've got these fringing fields coming off. So this is the electric field. Now I think there's a bug in this version of Microwave Office where it's not, uh, even though I have a dB, 40 dB range on the uh, color, it's not showing it in dB values. You can see it's 
8 times 10 to the 2, 2.8 times 10 to the 4, so there is a 40 dB range, so it's 20 log of this, but it's not showing up in the numerical values, but uh, we still have a 40 dB range. So, so if you take this as, you know, the kind of the strongest point right here, we want to be 40 dB down, we want to get down to this blue region. So you can see that the field should have decayed 40 dB down by, you know, the, uh, the, the, uh, the blue region right here. So what I can do is take and uh, take a ruler and hold it up. And let's say this is, uh, let's say this is uh, half an inch, half an inch. I measure 2.5 inches from here to here. That tells me that I want to be, you know, uh, five times. Uh, the distance, there's five substrate heights to get into the 40 dB range right here, four or five. This one is actually going to be a little bit more. I think this is going to be around five or six substrate heights to get from the edges strip down to here. You know, we want to stay, we want to put a shorting wall which is in the uh, 40 dB contour of the field right here. And that, that 40 dB may be this blue line right here, I'm not sure, but we definitely want to stay in the blue region. Uh, right now, I've got this defined at the minimum height or the minimum size for the wall. You know, it's just the width of the strip and it's just the height of the substrate. There's no extension above it. So now, if we go back and look, one thing I've also done, I've defined a circuit schematic called ideal short. And I've got this short, which is essentially, you know, a, a probably 1e e to the negative 10th ohm resistor that's in there because you can't connect a uh, ground directly to a port. You've got to have this short element or a resistor. I've got that defined, so what I'm going to do, once I've got the S parameters of this thing, I can take and look at the error from an ideal short circuit. I can compute that using this, uh, excuse me, this measurement right here, S model, look at the difference between them, and then take that in dB. Uh, and that's going to give me the, the error from an ideal short which of course is going to be a dot on the Smith chart. So looking at that uh, thing we have now, let's go ahead and close this window. Yes, you can see this is a pretty poor short circuit. It looks okay at, you know, maybe four gigahertz and it starts diverging. It's, it's awful by the time it gets to uh, 70 gigahertz. You know, you can take and extrapolate. What I've also done is take and look at the uh, inductance of this. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, extracting the inductance of the series uh, circuit right here. So we start off with, you know, about 50 picohenters of inductance, but then that starts going down only because the shunt capacitance we're seeing at the end of the line, probably coupling to the ground plane, you know, going over that short and coupling over to the ground plane out here is adding, is removing some of that inductance. So it looks like it's okay, but in reality it's not because we're adding resistance right here too. So. Uh, now we can take and uh, take this lot, this shorting wall and, and size it to something that looks uh, more appropriate. So I can take this uh, uh, these two parameters right here, so the wall height. Uh, I'm going to set that to a height of 5. Again, I, I took my machinist ruler and measured it on the screen. This is about a half inch right here from here to the 40 dB contour, minus 40 dB contour is about 2.5 inches. So uh, if I set this to a ratio of 5, you can see now it's going to go up. And this I'm going to set to a wall, and this is a total wall width, so I need to set this to 5, which is the width of the microstrip line, plus the ex two times the extension I want on either side. So this was a ratio of about 0.5 to 3 to get to that 40 dB contour, so I want to set this to 5 plus 2 times 6 millimeters, and that will give me something that looks like it would cover that 40 dB contour. Unfortunately, it gets erased when the parameters are updated, but I can take and simulate this again and see what, uh, what we get. You can see the ports are converging right here. So if you take and orient this, orient this so it covers up the field. You can see it looks pretty good. Maybe we could go a little bit higher in the height, but the width again looks pretty good. So that's going to sit here and uh, run until we get uh, three convergences. I think it's still doing the port. 
maybe it finished. Anyway, it's going to sit there and run until we get three convergences in a row below 1% error from the previous mesh, mesh iteration. And the meshing still, it would probably be adequate right here, but you can see we have four mesh shells, you know, across, so we're going to get those good edge currents captured. It's going to refine much higher, though, as it moves along. But you can still see that the uh, fields... The 40 dB contour is captured now by this shorting wall. Right, the simulation is now finished. Uh, now I can go back and take a look at the uh, error. And now it is down, uh, previously it was up at minus 20, now the error is down to uh, approximately minus 60 dB from the ideal short circuit. We'll look at the shorting wall impedance. It is now collapsed down to a single dot essentially right at the Smith chart. I think worst case is you can see here it's spiraling in and out right here. Now the interesting thing is you see these periodic responses right here. This is when, let me close this right here and go tile vertical. The issue, there's going to be a slight issue of a uh, dipole, excuse me, a monopole type response as you're feeding this line. You can consider this is a quarter wave monopole off a ground plane. At seven gigahertz, this thing is approximately a quarter wavelength tall and you're, you know, you're offset feeding it right at uh, a little, you know, where the impedance is uh, slightly higher from where it would be for an ideal monopole. But you're gonna get these periodic responses as the currents, you know, resonate up and down this thing from the open boundary at the top. So that could give you some radiation, but uh, it's still pretty damn good compared to the original, uh, short which was just confined to the width of the line and the height of the substrate so this shows that you know the the field termination is extremely important and you can't just think of it as a circuit termination uh, adding a bunch of vias say you want to keep it confined to the substrate so adding a bunch of vias you know in parallel uh, in this direction is not going to do anything it's not going to terminate the fields in the top you know you can add as Minimize the inductance as much as you want from a circuit perspective. It's not going to do anything. You could add more going in this direction, uh, and all that's going to do is terminate the fields uh, onto the uh, terminate the fields down onto the substrate. It's not going to do anything at the fields that are up in the air, giving them a proper termination. I arranged the two windows. I returned the simulation, just undid it to, back to the original uh, uh, wall with no extension on the sides or above the line. You can clearly see the difference now between the negative 20 dB and the negative 60 dB in the air and then the impedance, uh, drastic difference in the impedance. You can see the little dot right here with the, the good short circuit compared to the poor short circuit right here. Now what I forgot to show was the uh, ratio of the uh, x-directed electric field. If you go back and look at the diagram right here, you can see that uh, you know the, the E field should be contained in the Y and the Z axis as I show in this cross section right here. When you flip the cross section and look at the side of the microstrip, um, there should be no x-directed electric field. When there's any kind of discontinuity, you're going to see that electric field pop up. Let's go back and look at the um, plots. So what I've done is at 70 gigahertz, I've added a cut plane along the microstrip line. Here's the port. Here's the shorting wall. This is a minimum shorting wall. You can see between the, the uh, blue region right here is a TEM, and the red region is non-TEM because you can see now we've got extracted electric field, you know, coming off the lines and the line, in this case, jumping over the shorting wall and going to the ground plane behind it and going up into the air. What I've done right here is plot uh, the uh, case with no height, which you just saw in the live animation or live uh, view. And then, uh, so this has a uh, 30 dB ratio between the red and the blue right here. Now, if you go back and set the optimum sh height shorting wall, uh, that has been reduced drastically now. There's an 8 dB ratio or 20 log of 9.5 divided by 4, this cayenne versus the blue region. So the extracted electric field has been greatly reduced. There's still a little coupling 
from the microstrip onto the shorting wall and looks like this may be due to the quarter wave nature of the shorting wall, you know, the, the E-field coming off the top and then some possibly coming back around, probably some uh, uh, surface currents here bouncing up and down maybe. So how would you actually build this? Uh, what I typically do is take and uh, if I'm building a TRL fixture, I'll take and uh, have a uh, slot cut right at the end of the microstrip line and uh, typically minimum router width is uh, is 31 mils or about 0.8 millimeters so I'll size it just slightly above 31 mils so the router has a room to to kick over one and get a clean slot and uh, and then take a piece of copper foil or shim stock and put it up through the slot and solder it you know I may have a tiny bit of copper left on the top surface here so I can get a good solder joint but you really only need it right here and you got to have the bottom uh, soldered but then that will provide a decent shorting wall uh, to provide TEM field termination.